Uh, it is believed uh, back in history that Elizabeth I gave the silver arrow to Cambridge University to, uh, to commemorate a sports trophy. Back in the 1600s, uh, there was a, a family living in the village of Scorton. Uh, there were two sons that went to Cambridge. One of those sons uh, actually won the arrow and brought it home to the village of Scorton. Later on in the 1600s, uh, some friends got together and competed for this arrow in an archery competition. Uh, after that date, uh, the arrows had a little bit of a chequered history really. Uh, it's been competed for annually. Uh, the arrow's been lost, it's been shot from a bow, uh, it's been found, it's been repaired, and now it is here uh, in today uh, to be presented to the winner of the shoot today. The shoot in, in modern day t uh, times is competed at 100 yards and shooting is taking place both ways. So two arrows from each archer are shot up the field, those arrows are retrieved and then they're shot down the field at another set of targets. The winner of the arrow is the first archer to actually hit and pierce the black three inch diameter spot within the centre of the target. The, the history of the arrow and one of, one of the rules that is within the society is that the, the archery competition and the, the shoot for the arrow must be held within the boundaries of Yorkshire. So if anyone wins the arrow that doesn't reside in, in Yorkshire, then that person must arrange for the shoot to be held within the boundaries of Yorkshire. One of the shoot's traditions stems from many, many years ago where shillings used to be used uh, to pay uh, and to collect for the various scores on the target. Uh, modern day times, uh, we've gone to decimalisation and now it is five pences that we do. So when archers shoot their arrows into the different colours of the target, uh, they get paid out or have got to pay according to those colours. So if they get a gold, then they receive 10 pence, so that's two five pence pieces. If they uh, shoot an arrow into the red, blue or black, they receive five pence. And if they score or shoot an arrow into the white, then they have got to pay five pence. If an arrow goes into the green or doesn't hit the scoring zone, then nothing is paid either way. In the early years of the competition, obviously the, the type of bow that were actually shot was the, the, the long bow, that is the traditional long bow. And since the 1960s, 1970s, uh, that's developed into the composite recurve bow. Uh, so there are a mixture of those bow types of the competitors that are shooting. In, in the main, the majority of the archers that actually take part do carry the traditional longbow. And certainly in the last five years, uh, the longbowmen have certainly won the arrow more times than the recurve bow. The longbows are uh, a traditional uh, piece of equipment that normally was made from yew. And the strings were made from whatever they could get hold of. Um, but nowadays, this, like this longbow here, it's got it's got uh, Osage in, which is the dark wood. It's got bamboo in it, which is the centre, and the front is hickory. And a lot of the bows now are laminated with several laminations, sometimes up to seven laminations, which are, which makes them uh, a lot uh, faster uh, to shoot. So far better than the longbows that they had in the olden days, which was you, which as I say, which. Um, you couldn't leave strung up like this because they tend to, uh, uh, the power would be lost. So you had to unstring them every time you shot them. So the string made of on this one? The string on this one is made of fast flight, um, which is, uh, it doesn't stretch as much as the normal strings of Dacron and 
Um, it allows a better cast on the bow. As long as I don't miss my shot. Um, the arrows, these are made out of uh, uh, Sitka spruce. Uh, the fletchings are feathers. With the cock feather, in this case, marked with a little white splodge on the end. And the uh, knocks are plastic and the piles are brass. And you try to make these as light as possible. These are barrelled to make them more efficient in the air. 5 sixteenths in the centre, 932s each end. The, the Society of Archers uh, is, is made up of those competitors in that particular year. So whoever enters the shoot becomes a member of the Society of the Arrow for that particular year. Uh, the, the only person that holds office within the Society is the clerk to the Society of which I currently hold office and this is the badge of office that I currently hold and it is my responsibility duty to assist the winner of the arrow in setting up uh, and organising the following year's event. Also uh, within the trophies of the society uh, is the, the horn spoon again uh, it's first recorded back in 1830 and this is actually presented during the day to the worst white on the last end. One of the other trophies that the Society has is the, the Scorton Bugle. This is awarded to the archer that first hits the red zone of the target. Uh, now he is called the Lieutenant of the Arrow and he assists the Captain of the Arrow, that's the winner of the, the, the Scorton Arrow, in sorting out the shoot for the following year. Uh, Ever since the, the, the shoot started, uh, the, the scores and the meetings are recorded in parchment and latterly uh, in these books and it can be seen that the, the archers present and shooting on that particular day sign the relevant records and then it is documented what score each person has, has obtained during that year. These are kept uh, up to date each year uh, and the society gets a calligrapher to do the relevant record taking.